Please take your seats. The program is about to begin. Complexity surrounds us on the roads, in our factories, in the lab, and in the office. It presents us with problems that seem unsolvable and creates a world where suboptimal solutions are considered an industry standard. But good enough doesn't scale. You need a path through this complexity. You need to transform your approach and discover new ways to unlock better solutions. To find clarity where none has existed before and redefine operational excellence. D-Wave Practical Quantum Computing is reinventing the enterprise. We're driven by business outcomes and commercial value. We deliver clarity and efficiency for your business. We build solutions that you can use today to solve your biggest challenges. A world where complex problems are no longer barriers, but opportunities. Imagine what we can do without restraints. D-Wave Quantum Computing is changing the business world today. Please welcome to the stage, CEO of D-Wave, Dr. Alan Barretts. Thank you. As the voice of G slash D said, my name is Alan Barretts and I am the CEO of D-Wave. And it's a pleasure for me to welcome you all here to Qubits 2023. There are over 100 of you here in the room today and you'll have an opportunity to ask live questions at the end of each presentation. And there are over 3,000 that have registered to watch the live streaming. Truly a testament to the importance of quantum computing, as well as the importance and value being placed in D-Wave's practical approach to quantum computing. Now, I just noticed that we have a Wall Street Journal here. I'm not really sure exactly why. Um, I don't typically read papers much anymore. Maybe you all do, but you know, let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Business and finance. Ah. D-Wave, put your business in a super position. Use quantum computing to improve critical business operations today. Now, <clears throat> normally, I would not spring for an ad in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, but as I think uh, you all know, we did uh, go public on uh, August 8th, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And when you're listed on the New York Stock Exchange, they provide some incentives. And one of the incentives was a free Wall Street Journal ad, and we decided to time it with Qubits. Um, so look, Qubits is the opportunity every year for us at D-Wave to get together with our customers, partners, and the industry more broadly to connect with one another and to learn from one another. But this year, we're gonna spend a lot of time showcasing real world applications that our customers are working on today. In fact, over the next three days, you're gonna hear from 15 different customers about the work that they are doing with D-Wave systems on practical quantum applications. Now, we all know that quantum computing has the potential to dramatically transform business and society in a positive way. But oftentimes you'll hear quantum computing is complex and we're years away from actually being able to use quantum computers. But that's FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, propagated by those in the industry that are years away 
from having quantum computers that can actually solve real world problems. But that's not the case with D-Wave. We chose a quantum path that has allowed us to get to commercial first and years ahead of anybody else. Our theme for qubits this year is complexity to clarity. A part of that is how our clarity roadmap announced about a year ago is helping businesses to better embrace quantum and understand how to use it to benefit business operations. But another part of that is as you use quantum to solve your complex problems, it provides clarity and improvement in how your business operates. Here with me today on stage will be four different companies, all giving you live demonstrations of practical quantum applications that they're working on today. But it's not just those four or the 15 in total that are here with us at the conference. Many companies in many industries of all sizes are beginning to embrace quantum computing today. Now, bear with me a minute as I put a finer point on the message that I'm trying to deliver. Unfortunately, the quantum industry often defines quantum computing as gate model computing. That's one approach to quantum computing. And it's true that gate model systems are years away from being able to deliver practical value. And that's why you'll hear everybody saying it's going to be years before you can actually see real use cases on quantum computing. But the truth is, quantum encompasses more than just gate model. It also encompasses annealing quantum computing. And that's where D-Wave decided to start. We chose annealing because it's a much easier technology to work with. It's easier to scale. It's less sensitive to noise and errors. And it has allowed us to become commercial years ahead of everybody else. Moreover, annealing quantum computers are excellent at solving optimization problems. Things like employee scheduling or shipping container unloading and loading or even protein folding. Frankly, most of the important hard problems that businesses need to solve are optimization problems. And so you can get started today, not years from now, leveraging D-Wave's annealing quantum computers to solve many of your important hard problems. And it's an investment in the future because we now know that gate model systems will likely not ever be able to deliver speed ups on optimization problems. So you're always going to be leveraging that annealing system for that class of problems. I often like to talk about the fact that there are two different categories of use cases. There's what I'll call revolutionary applications and what I'll call evolutionary applications. Revolutionary applications are things like designer drugs, creating a drug for you specifically, or global weather modeling. These are applications that truly are years away for any form of quantum computing. But then there are evolutionary applications. <clears throat> These are applications like the problems I described a minute ago. These are problems that actually are being solved today by businesses, but they're so hard that heuristics are being used to come up with good enough solutions. But with annealing quantum computers, we can deliver better, if not optimal, solutions to deliver better business outcomes. And that's where we are at D-Wave today, annealing, optimization, commercial. And you don't need to be physicists to use these systems. If you can write an application, you can get started. And this is all enabled by our quantum computers, our quantum cloud service, and our professional services organization. Over the course of the next hour, 
we're going to talk about three key initiatives to empower businesses to leverage quantum computing. Of course, we're going to talk about product innovation. We're going to give you an update on our Clarity Roadmap and talk about some new things that you'll see very soon. We're also going to talk about scientific advancement. We spend a lot of time working together with our colleagues in academia to understand not only the science behind our systems, but to understand what our systems provably can do and can deliver. And we use that both to help us explain to the industry and the market the power in our systems, as well as to give us insights into how to innovate on our roadmap going forward. And third, we're going to talk about commercial adoption, how businesses are using the technology today. And you'll see a variety of use cases. So despite what you might hear from ind industry pundits, and those with big megaphones, the era of commercial quantum computing is here today. And D-Wave is leading the charge. Not something that you need to plan for tomorrow, like with gate model systems, but you can start unlocking business benefit today. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hyperion Research conducted a survey recently, and they found that 80% of the uh, respondents plan to increase their commitment in quantum computing over the next two to three years. Moreover, a third of the respondents said they plan to spend $15 million or more annually going forward. And as we go through the course of the next couple of days, you'll hear from companies like MasterCard or Deloitte or Johnson & Johnson, Schlumberger, Davidson Technology, and others who are putting quantum computing to use today, solving complex problems in areas like fraud detection, bin packing, employee scheduling, and more. So businesses are jumping on board today and embracing quantum today, not just exploring the technology, but building proofs of concept, seeing benefits, and moving forward. And at D-Wave, we also have the data to support it. At the end of Q3 of last year, we announced that we had expanded our footprint to 63 commercial customers. That was a 24% growth over the same first three quarters last year. Moreover, amongst those 63 commercial companies, over two dozen of them are Forbes Global 2000 companies. Moreover, our LEAP, real-time quantum cloud service, had over 32 million jobs submitted in 2022, last year. And that was a 66% increase over 2021. And our quantum compute as a service revenue, revenue that we derive from customers using our Leap quantum cloud service, grew 34% year over year, and now comprises 79% of our total Q3 revenue, at least as of the end of Q3. And our developer ecosystem continues to grow. Now over 34,000 strong. And these are the people that are providing guidance to the industry and that are helping to support people who are getting started with D-Wave quantum computing. As I mentioned, uh, at the end of Q3, we had over 63 commercial customers. And last year, we signed customers building a variety of different applications to help transform their business. Companies like ArcelorMittal, working on leveraging quantum for steel coil manufacturing. Or Unisys, working on bin packing for optimizing air cargo. MasterCard, who you'll hear from shortly, working on customer loyalty rewards programs, cross-border settlement, and fraud detection. Deloitte, we're working together with Deloitte on a variety of different government-focused applications. Koch Holdings, 
in Turkey, a large conglomerate, a variety of use cases across their subsidies, subsidiaries. And a very interesting strategic deal that we did with a company, actually an entity called Uptown Basel in Basel, Switzerland. They've actually built a quantum incubator in Switzerland, and they are leveraging our system for uh, what we call dial tone to make available to companies in the region who want to start with quantum. And as they start working with their systems, if they want to progress further, then there's an opportunity for us to build an even closer relationship with those companies. So it's evident. Companies are embracing quantum computing for driving efficiencies, for increasing revenue, for reducing costs, and for unlocking business value. And we've made it easier than ever to access our systems and technologies. Leap is now available, our quantum cloud service Leap, is now available in 38 countries around the world. If you're an AWS customer, you can buy us on AWS Marketplace. So you can you know, use some of your AWS dollars to buy D-Wave Leap quantum cloud service as well as some of our professional services offerings. We have trusted partners aiding us in the quantum journey. Companies like Deloitte, Multiverse, NEC, Sigma I. And it's not about buying time on our quantum computers. It's about buying solutions. At the end of last year, we announced a new pricing model for D-Wave. No longer consumption-based. Now, developer seat and application-based. In other words, if you want to write an application, you can buy a developer seat and essentially get all the time you need. You don't have to watch the clock on the time you're using. If you want to run a business application, you can buy a production license and get all the time you need to run that application. Okay, let's switch gears for a few minutes and talk about products. Uh, commercial maturity is all about relentless and quality product delivery. And I'm excited to share with you some progress on our Clarity Roadmap, including progress on our Advantage annealing quantum computers, our gate model quantum computers. We announced a year ago that we're now also building gate model systems, our Leap quantum cloud service, and our hybrid solvers. Since last qubits, we announced that we have increased our LEAP footprint, now having Advantage quantum computers in three geographies within LEAP. We have one in Canada, we have one in the United States, and we have one in Europe. But as a LEAP customer, you can access any and all of those quantum computers. We announced our constrained quadratic model hybrid solver, a really important hybrid solver. First of all, it raises the level of abstraction for developers. So now, if you want to program a quantum computer, all you have to do is write your linear programming model or quadratic programming model, something that operations research and data scientists are accustomed to doing. Give us that model, and our software will translate it into a form in which the quantum computer can help to solve it. We also announced pre-solve techniques to basically reduce the size of your problem by eliminating redundancies. We introduced continuous variables for you know, the case where maybe you're doing drug trials and you know, the length of the trial is continuous, not integer. Weighted constraints for the case where you may not be able to satisfy all the constraints and you want to weight one constraint more than another. And all of this has been directly informed by your feedback, by customer feedback. As we go through the course of the next two days, you'll hear about new, new product updates from D-Wave. We're gonna talk a little bit about our progress on our Advantage 2 system. We put an early prototype, a small early prototype of Advantage 2 in Leap last year. The new architecture, although fabricated using the same fabrication process that we use to fabricate our current Advantage system, but now, we have small-scale early prototypes using the new fabrication stack where we're already seeing four times lower noise, driving increased coherence. And those systems, just like 
the first time around with the Advantage 2 prototype that we put in Leap, fabricated first time out. We got working processes that we were able to calibrate. So really excited about that. And our problem visualizer has been updated to support the new Advantage 2 topology. From a gate model perspective, we fabricated multi-layer gate model qubits. We are now benchmarking one and two qubit gates on those qubits. We've put control on the same chip as the qubits and demonstrated much more efficient readout than anybody else has been able to achieve. And we've just completed the design of our first logical qubit, able to support error correction. We've also introduced a gate simulator into our Ocean tool suite. And now you can start programming gate model applications within Ocean. You can construct circuits. You've got a flexible contact man manager, a comprehensive gate library, and you can create your own gates. But as I said, the science is also important. It's a high priority for us. Over the last year, there's been groundbreaking research from D-Wave and our friends and colleagues in academia. Recent research has demonstrated that our 2,000 qubit and 5,000 qubit annealing quantum computers are performing coherent quantum annealing, quantum annealing in the coherent regime. This was demonstrated by being able to precisely match the theory for how coherent quantum annealing works. And this has also been um, allowed us to show a scaling performance advantage for spin glass optimization problems, some of the hardest of the optimization problems. And, and this is really interesting, coherent quantum annealing cannot be classically simulated. So, you know, anyone who says, oh, we can use simulated annealing, coherent quantum annealing cannot be classically simulated. We also think, spoiler alert, that this could lead to the first practical quantum supremacy result. So we're really proud of our track record, continuous product development and innovation, ongoing commitment to furthering the science, and helping customers to reap the benefits from quantum. OK, now I'm going to showcase the power and the potential of quantum computing as evidenced in real life applications. We have four live demos that uh, we're going to show you. And um, I'm really excited for this part of the, of the session, because in some sense, this is the most important part of the session. OK, so please join me in welcoming Steve Flinter, Vice President of AI and Machine Learning, Head of Emerging Technology from MasterCard. Hey, Alan. Hey, Steve. How are you? Great. Very nice to meet Good. you. Good. Nice to see you. OK. So, Steve, I am a banking executive. OK. Now, you might say, Alan, <laughs> you don't look like a banking executive. But okay. I can fix that. <laughs> pardon, pardon me. I guess I should have a, a privacy screen here. But let me just set that there. Let me. Uh, Go ahead and put my little vest on here. Very sharp. Yeah, exactly. OK. In the interest of time, I'll <laughs> a couple buttons. And of course, you can't be a banking executive <laughs> without your bowler. OK. Very good. <laughs> OK, so Steve, I'm a banking executive. Okay. And uh, I want to create a loyalty rewards program. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you know, what I need to get help with is how to create a program that's going to kind of maximize revenue back to me. Because you know, we need to get the right programs to the right cardholders. Sure. So, sounds like a fairly complex problem. So yeah, maybe really you can explain complex. it in a little bit more detail. There are all kinds of different parameters we need mm -hmm. to deal with. We want to make sure that you know, our customers are satisfied with the programs we're offering. We want to maximize the uptake. Lots of different variables that we need to deal with. OK. Well, maybe we can help you with that. I'm hoping you can. 
So let me show you something that we're working on. This isn't MasterCard. distracting you, is it? <laughs> not at all, not at all. This is how I meet all my customers. Um, let me show you something that we're working on MasterCard that, that may be a good fit for the problem you've just described. So we're looking at the whole problem of offer allocation. So it sounds like from what you've described, you have a number of complex variables, uh, like the number of cardholders maybe in your program, the number of offers in your campaign, Maybe you have scores around propensity or likelihood to accept offers, and you're trying to maximize some value or, or optimize some value. Exactly, and it's driving us crazy. OK. So we, we've, we're working on a system uh, focused on solving that problem using the D-Wave quantum computer, as it happens. Um, so what we can do in our system is we can set up the number of cardholders we want to run in our program. We can set up the number of offers that you have in your total campaign the number of offers you want to give to any individual cardholder. And we can also help you optimize for things that you care about. So we can optimize for the total revenue that the campaign uh, is likely to yield. Or we can also I like that. I'm a banker. Absolutely. But you can also tweak that. And you can say, well, I want to optimize for you know, cardholder satisfaction, which in this case means uh, ensuring that the most cardholders get offers that are relevant to them. And relevance is a big thing when it comes to providing offers and, and rewards. Please. So we can tweak all of that. So let me go ahead and, and set up one problem just to give you an example of what this might look like. So here I'm choosing relatively small numbers, so 100 offers, uh, sorry, 100 cardholders, total of 10 uh, offers, and we're going to give four offers per cardholder. So let me go ahead and submit that problem. So what's happening now in the background is we've taken that data in. We're using simulated data for, for this example. Uh, we're formulating it. We're going to submit that job to the uh, quantum annealer, and we're going to get a result back. So we can see on the, the screen here, on the left-hand side, what we're able to do is estimate that with that particular configuration and with that particular run, that we that offer program would have yielded a little over $150 thousand dollars in sales or, uh, or new revenue. And we can then also compare that to the traditional or the classic approach, which as you can see on the right hand side, would have yielded about 96,000. So by running this program through the quantum annealer and by optimizing for the allocation of offers across your full population of cardholders, we're seeing an, an improvement in about 55,000 in revenue. That's great. And I got to tell you, Steve, when we rehearsed this yesterday, that was only 54,900. That's <laughs> a little bit better. We've already the made another $100. <laughs> there you go. And you can also see, if you look down at the bottom of the chart, that we can also give an estimate as to the cardholder satisfaction. Yeah, so this going. tells us that more and more of your cardholder population are getting offers that are relevant to them. And equally, the merchants in your program, the ones who are actually giving these offers, again, we can estimate that they will see a better overall satisfaction because their offers are reaching the right and relevant cardholders. But we can actually go even a little bit deeper, Alan. So if I click through here, what we can then estimate is, you know, how are those offers being allocated? How is your budget being used? Um, even things like how many uh, offers each cardholder is getting to ensure that we're maximizing all of the various parameters that you give us to ensure we can give you the best possible campaign. Uh, and so this is what this graph is, is showing. Now, the last thing I want to show you, Alan, is this, when we set it up, was a relatively small number of cardholders. Obviously, I suspect your program has a lot more. It, they're bigger than uh, the Millions, numbers that we've yeah. shown there. So what we're working on uh, in my group and in MasterCard is to try and estimate, as we start to scale this, what does it look like? How can we estimate the quantum advantage that we can get as we grow more and more cardholders into the program and try to solve bigger and bigger problems around this idea of offer allocation? Uh, and that's what this graph tells us, where we've done some experimentation in conjunction with some of the engineers in D-Wave to try and help us estimate how that's going to play out as we grow the size of the programs. This is fantastic, Steve. Just what I needed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Pleasure. Okay, allow me to undress. Okay, and now I'd like to introduce, if we could go back to the slides. If we could go back to the slides. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Kate Avery, principal at Deloitte. Hi, okay. Kate. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Thanks nice for being to see here. You. So listen, Kate, I did not want you to feel left out. I know. I can't wait to see the costume and, change and here. So um, turns out that uh, I'm executive at a very large 
mm -hmm. security firm. So let me put my security jacket on. The blue's a little off, I have to say, uh, but yeah. not bad. Well, hey, listen, you know, I don't want to hear what my wife is saying watching it on the live streaming. <laughs> she, yeah, she, she picked out what I'm wearing today. Oh, so. okay, I don't want to criticize her. Okay, Never criticize there we go. All right, how's that look, good? Okay, <clears throat> okay, so actually, Kate, I'm with a large government agency. Yes. And uh, basically, we've got a massive uh, scheduling problem for security at airports, actually. We have over 60,000 employees, mm -hmm. and we have to schedule them into 450 different airports. And, uh, you know, it's a huge challenge because there are many, many factors that we need to consider. And in fact, it's so challenging that we're typically creating schedules six months in advance. Yeah. So maybe Deloitte can help us with this. We would love to help you, and frankly, I, you know, the benefits of this can benefit us all because the delays at the airport that we've been seeing these days, including myself just yesterday. So yes, absolutely. That's right, Kate missed the rehearsal because of days know, at the days at the airport. Well, as you can see, we have a schedule here. This schedule is generated in just a few seconds. Um, and I believe, Alan, you and your team were spending weeks sometimes working on creating these schedules, as you said, six months in advance. Six months in advance. So these can be done in real time very, very easily. So what you see here is uh, one airport over five lanes and 900 different people. And if I click, you can see that there are different shifts. It's pretty complicated, actually. You have to have different genders, different diversity. You need to have different levels of experience. And there are all sorts of different things like holiday schedules, people that work night shifts, day shifts for us to, to calibrate. And so what we've done is using the D-Wave technology and actually also partnering um, with the Savannah College of Art and Design created a very intuitive and human-centered approach to scheduling that can be done in just seconds. So this is great, Kate, but now stuff happens, right? Um, illness, um, you know, weather, and we may lose mm -hmm. some of our employees on a given day. And the problem with creating these schedules months in advance is that when that happens, we're like stuck. We're scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. So suppose we were to lose like 10% of our workforce. What would happen? Absolutely. Well, great question. We actually have a way of being able to change this pretty much in real time. Again, as we said, uh, this was being done. This is going to take just a minute because this is very complicated. But this was being done yeah. over weeks and months and pretty much impossible. You pulled up the Wall Street Journal earlier today. I think many of us have seen on the front page of the Wall Street Journal sometimes the security lines that weave in and out, I think, to the Seattle airport just recently this year uh, was all the way to the parking lot. Sure. So in this period of time, when it's going to take us just a few minutes. And by the way, I mean, I said live demos, and we meant live demos. I mean, these things are actually hitting the Leap Cloud service, running against the quantum computer to solve the problems. That's why you're seeing the spinning wheel. Now, if it keeps spinning, we've got a problem, but. Uh, it's not gonna keep spinning. I wasn't here yesterday, but I ran here this morning at 7 a.m. And, and tried it just to make sure. But, um, but as I was saying, the benefit of this is really incredible because as a manager, mm -hmm. you have very little control and ability to adjust in real time today. Mm -hmm. They're literally just trying to move humans around and that's stressful. Mm -hmm. And also, look, look, it's already done. But just one other point on that is, um, as an employee, attrition occurs because I feel the stress and I feel that I can't make adjustments to my, to my schedule in real time. So using D-Wave quantum computing and Savannah College of Art and Design human Center design, it really allows us to improve the employee experience, the traveler experience, and the manager's experience. So here we go, let's just take a quick look. And what, look, it's adjusted everything. So now if I click back in here, uh, if those of you who have photographic memories will uh, <laughs> recall that there are different names here and different levels of experience. And the computer has helped us to re-optimize the schedule with just 90% of the workforce. That's great. This is fantastic, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. OK. Now, please join me in welcoming Dale Moore, the Chief Operating Officer at Davidson Technologies.
Hey, Dale. Good morning, Alan. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. You as well. Okay, so now I am an operational commander. Okay. I feel so, like I need to salute you, Alan. I, I don't know what uh, to do here. No, please, please don't do that. <laughs> um, well, you can if you want to. <laughs> so, so, Dale, I'm, I'm an operational commander, and, you know, I, I worry about things like threats and, you know, how we can neutralize them with various interceptors. And I know that you've been working on applications related to missile defense, and maybe you can kind of walk us through that. Absolutely. So, Alan, as an operational commander, the first thing that you care about is your, uh, your readiness situation and your mm -hmm. posture against those types of threats. So what we have here, um, first, uh, let, me, let me introduce uh, the Davidson developed Decision 1 application uh, that will leverage D-Wave systems as we run this optimization problem set. The first thing I want to say uh, is that everything you're going to see here is notional and unclassified. So I want to set that uh, stage real, real quick. What you see here is uh, a, a threat situation. Hawaii is, is uh, being... Um, aggressed upon, and uh, we are preparing uh, for an operational scenario to defend Honolulu, in this case against a series of threats. So we're going to go to the modeling aspect. By, by the way, for those of you who are watching closely, you'll notice that Dale is not touching the keyboard, but Brad <laughs> here in the front row is touching the iPad. I don't know, Dale was nervous about running the application himself, so he had to bring support, but that's okay. They didn't want me to screw it up, Alex, right, exactly. so this is really important for our company. Um, the first thing is, uh, this, is a mo this is the modeling input that we're going to uh, set the stage for the scenario. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one is our defended asset is Honolulu, as I mentioned. Um, this is going to be a very simple scenario to start off with. Uh, we have one uh, uh, launch point we're going to leverage uh, with a, a couple of what we call medium-range ballistic missiles uh, as the threat scenario. We're going to move into next the uh, parametric inputs that we can uh, modify to set kind of the operating conditions degradation cap uh, of capability, things like atmospherics, um, heliospherics, um, as well as performance effectiveness. So we're going to leave everything as it is right now at a very high level of effectiveness with really no degradation uh, in the capability. And we're going to run this scenario very simply. Uh, this is now reaching out to the D-Wave uh, quantum annealer. Uh, with our algorithms uh, running an optimization problem, this is what we call weapon to target assignment optimization. So what you're going to get back here in a minute as we scroll down, is a solution provided by our algorithms with your system uh, uh, driving the processing, basically showing a, uh, a scenario where uh, we've optimized how the weapons align to the targets. Uh, we've got a 99.9% .9 probability, probability of kill hmm. of those uh, uh, targets and threats, and, and Honolulu, thankfully, is at a 99.9% .9 survivability. So that's great, Dale, but this was easy peasy. <laughs> what about the real world? Well, Can we maybe take a look at that? The real world is very different, Alan. Uh, you know, these, these uh, threats can be very complex. The system itself, uh, when you think about missile defense and all the components of it, targeting, tracking, uh, engagement, it's all very complex. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the complexity of the scenario itself. We're gonna add two long-range ballistic missiles here. We're gonna increase our interceptor uh, 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 fold to, to, to 10. And uh, we're going to go ahead and rerun this same scenario. Uh, before we do that, we're going to modify the parametric inputs. We're going to decrease the effectiveness yeah. of the More interceptors. Yep. We're going to add some atmospherics. Uh, rain, uh, solar flare activity has an impact on performance. Uh, now we're going to rerun the scenario, re again, reaching out to the D-Wave system. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer. Yeah, uh, but not that much longer. Nope, it is a quantum computer. That's right. So the solution provided here, again, optimizing what we have from an interceptor, the location of those interceptors and the location of the threats, uh, increasing that to four. You see the probability to kill went down just a little bit, uh, as well as the, the probability of survivability in Honolulu went down a little bit. Again, this just showcases the fact that there are very complex scenarios here from an optimization perspective. As, a, as an operational commander, you want to know what's the most uh, realistic solution and a most optimized solution yeah. that, you, that you can deliver to protect uh, your, your, both That's fantastic, your country and your yep, troops. This is great. And you, you can imagine, as this starts scaling up, this is a massively complex problem. It is. And think about, from a solution perspective, the first scenario we ran, it had over 4,000 possible solutions. This second scenario had over 67 million. So as things get more complex, it is really important from our perspective 
to leverage uh, the best processing capabilities in the world and, uh, and optimize the solutions leveraging Davidson algorithms in support of our warfighters. This is fantastic, and we're thrilled to be working with you and proud to be a part of it. No, thank, thank you, you, Alan. Appreciate your time. Uh, spend a couple minutes wrapping up, and then we are going to open it up for some Q&A, which I did promise. Uh, a mirror would be helpful here. <laughs> okay. So at D-Wave, our mission is to unlock the power of quantum computing to benefit business and society today. Not seven years from now, not 10 years from now, not 15 years from now, but today. We have a singular focus on helping our customers to achieve real value and using quantum computing for important business applications. And this motivates us to invent the unimaginable, to push on the boundaries of what's possible. And we've got an amazing product roadmap, an amazing product development team, a phenomenal science team that's helping us to drive all of this. So commercial quantum computing is here, and we're proud to be a part of this transformative moment. With that, I'd like to introduce Murray Tom, uh, who's going to serve as our MC for the remainder of the session. Thanks, Alan. Hey, Murray. Good to join you. How are you? Doing well. So, Murray, boy, we've come a long way. It has. Um, you know, Murray uh, was responsible way back for defining and building the Leap Quantum Cloud Service, and you know, I kind of remember the design boards and all the stickies and look at where we are today just a few years later. Yeah, it's fantastic. Actually, this is, I remember when we were going through those brainstorming sessions and we had one of those exercises which was, imagine yourself in the future. What would you like that future to be like? And this is actually very much what we had written was uh, ease of use, people being able to build practical applications quickly uh, and really impacting businesses with customer value. So it's exciting to see that. It is exciting. Right. Okay, so we promised some Q&A. Yes. And my understanding is the way we're doing this is Questions are being submitted, and then you're uh, viewing them here, and you're going to ask me questions. That's right. That's right. So our first question here is, um, Alan, uh, what's one piece of advice that you'd give CIOs about quantum? Yeah. Um, oh, so first of all, it's here today. It's time to start looking at your complex business processes, your complex business applications and rest assured that there is a technology that you can leverage to help you solve those problems and improve real clarity uh, and real improvement to your business operations going forward. It's time to get started. Awesome, awesome, okay, great. Uh, and then we've got a question from Sergio. Um, what is your strategy for academic partnerships beyond research? Sort of in concrete, are there any plans to promote the inclusion of D-Wave in programs of study? Yeah, so, so a couple of things, first of all, when I talked about um, advancing the science and you know, some of the work that we've been doing on demonstrating coherent quantum annealing, scaling performance uh, advantage for spin glass optimization, uh, we often do that work in close collaboration with uh, you know, various researchers in academic institutions or national labs or other. And so you know, we have an active program of reaching out and really uh, trying to work collaboratively uh, with the academic environment. Um, but we also have a program for uh, uh, university and other academic institutions who might want to access LEAP. Um, I mentioned that we've transitioned from a consumption time-based model uh, to a developer seat and uh, application-based model. And we have a very, very attractive program for uh, university and other research institutions to kind of get engaged with us and do their research leveraging our technologies. Yeah, I mean, if I can even build on what you're saying, I may also know that um, we've actually given a presentation as part of our quantum training program at Vanderbilt University uh, in the Wondery there. Uh, so actually, uh, you know, participating in some university programs. And I also know that uh, the ULIC Supercomputing Center and uh, ISI are also. Exactly, yep. I mentioned that uh, we now have three Advantage quantum computers in our Leap Cloud service. One is uh, at our facility in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, but we have one at the Ulich Supercomputing Center in Germany. Uh, they are 
uh, housing that for us as a part of our LEAP environment, but as a part of that relationship, they also have uh, significant access to the system for uh, their researchers to be able to leverage the system. And then um, m even more recently, we placed one at the USC Information Sciences Institute, that is uh, our LEAP system in the US, and again, significant time and access for being able to do research on the systems. Thanks, Alan. Thanks. So uh, I think our next question is, is an interesting one because it kind of touches on the fact that I think in business that we're often sort of faced with the challenges we want to overcome. We have an idea of a direction we want to go, but it's not necessarily obvious that optimization is actually could be the challenge that's getting us there. The question is, how applicable is quantum annealing technology? Are, are optimization problems limited? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I, you know, I made this comment uh, a little while ago, and it is absolutely the case that most of the important hard problems that businesses need to solve today are in fact optimization problems. Now, um, Boston Consulting Group uh, uh, a while back defined the total addressable market for quantum computing. Um, and you know, they came up with you know, numbers for today, numbers for the near term, numbers for the long term. But they divided that market into four technology areas. They divided it into optimization, linear algebra, factorization, and differential equations. Optimization, the kinds of problems I talked about a few minutes ago, you know, fraud detection, uh, you know, protein folding, um, you know, uh, painting vehicles on a manufacturing pl plant for optimizing to minimize paint changes, and so on. Those are optimization problems. Linear algebra is essentially machine learning. Factorization is crypto. Differential equations is things like quantum chemistry and computational fluid dynamics. BCG estimated that about a quarter of the total addressable market is in each of those four areas. So optimization is about a quarter of the total addressable market for quantum, according to uh, Boston Consulting Group. Uh, factorization, a quarter. Linear algebra, a quarter. Uh, differential equations, a quarter. With our annealing quantum computers, we absolutely address optimization. We nail that, and likely, it will always be the case that you will need annealing for optimization. As I alluded to previously, it's unlikely that gate model systems will ever deliver a speed up on optimization problems. But annealing can also address linear algebra and factorization. It cannot address differential equations. That's the one area that uh, annealing quantum computers cannot address. But gate model systems are very good at differential equations. They can also do linear algebra, they can also do factorization, but they cannot do optimization. So, you know, with our annealing systems, we can really address about three quarters of the market. We just can't do differential equations. Once we deliver our gate model system, then we're going to be able to address the full market for quantum. But, you know, optimization is the low-hanging fruit today, and that's really where, you know, most of the need is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, personally, I found that, like, when people think about classical computing, you know, if they're thinking about the low level with floating point operations, that's a relatively horizontal technical capability. You can apply that on a variety of industries. And optimization, you know, I've also found in terms of, you know, manufacturing and logistics or in financial applications or in, you know, yeah, life You're sciences. absolutely right. I mean, look, we, uh, we work with companies in all industries, but the three where we've got the most traction are manufacturing, logistics, and financial services. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. The, um, okay, so I think we've got time for uh, one more one question, more question. It, it seems like this year, Qubits is much more customer focused with a lot more live demos. You know, what changes in the past year are fueling this adoption and development from your perspective? Um, so, uh, look, um, you know, I, 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 I think that um, the fact that um, you can leverage quantum with hybrid solvers and you know, we have made a significant investment, not just in our quantum computers, but also our hybrid solvers that bring classical compute together with quantum compute. That's really what has allowed us to start tackling problems at true uh, commercial scale, right? I mean, the way this works is that the classical compute takes in the full problem, it finds the hard core, and sends that off to the quantum computer. And that's really allowed us to scale. And that's really what's been very transformative recently and, and really allowed us to attack true commercial problems. And we're absolutely going to continue investing in that technology. Yeah.
And I think that continued investment is, uh, is fantastic in terms of like keeping that pace of change uh, accelerating. Exactly. Terrific, Alan. Murray, Murray, thank you. It was a pleasure. And I'm going to leave uh, this crowd in your capable hands. And uh, thank you for emceeing for us. Yeah. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks, Alan. Round of applause for Alan Barrett, our CEO.